So the combination of alaritumab in combination with doxorubicin did have some increased toxicities compared to doxorubicin alone. Uh, the most common side effects uh, that were seen uh, for the combination included nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, neutropenia, and mucositis. Although it's important to note that, uh, uh, that while grade three or higher neutropenia was seen for the combination, uh, the rates of febrile neutropenia uh, were not significantly different between the combination compared to doxorubicin alone. It's also important to note that there was no significant cardiac uh, signal uh, uh, suggesting cardiac toxicity for the combination when compared to doxorubicin alone. I think uh, despite the increase in some of the, those side effects, namely nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, mucositis, and uh, neutropenia, uh, it's important to note that uh, those are side effects that are commonly seen uh, in the community for a wide range of chemotherapeutic agents, and I wouldn't expect uh, the ability to manage those toxicities to pose a significant challenge to either academic or community-based providers. So uh, there was a phase one trial done after the phase one, two trial, looking specifically at interactions between doxorubicin and aleratumab looking at PKs, looking at cardiac indica indications, and it doesn't look like there is increased cardiotoxicity in the presence of aleratumab. And so there doesn't seem to be an increased drug-drug interaction. What I think is important to remind users of doxorubicin is if you're going to go above 300 milligrams per meter squared, the judicious use of dextrazoxane as a cardioprotectant was also written into these trials. I think one of the things that's come out of the sarcoma field is a number of us actually push the amount of lifetime anthracyclines that patients see. And a lot of us have gotten very comfortable going well beyond the 300 milligrams per meter squared uh, lifetime dose max that sort of the breast cancer doctors have capped the breast cancer patients at. And I think the first thing you have to have is a little bit of perspective. So if you're not curing someone and your best drug is an anthracycline, you may need to use more. And so I think knowing how to use more is also important. I think knowing when to use doxtrazoxane, knowing when to get a cardiologist involved, all of this is something that will test the comfort level of a lot of the private practice doctors and our community colleagues that we have to partner with. And so, you know, we have a really nice cardio-oncology unit at Washington University that actually pairs with us as we go above these thresholds. And remember, you're going to be giving on this protocol, what, 8 times 75, which is 600 milligrams per meter squared of doxorubicin, which is going to push you towards patients that would get heart failure. So knowing how to give your anthracycline, whether as a continuous infusion to try to prevent cardiotoxicity or to add dextrazoxane, is something where I think this partnership between the academics that do this all the time and you know, the local doctors who should be giving this is something that's really important to really build trust with.